Okay, so to understand um, to understand how the curve appears like it does, the consolidation curve for soil, let's go to this slide here, which is slide uh, slide in page eight, I guess I have here. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to go back in time. We are at a site. This is the site where we're going to construct, let's say, and uh, we're going to go back in time for our site. So let's say that a hundred years ago, our site was actually, the elevation of our site was actually lower than what it, what it is now, okay? This is today. This one here, but let's go back in time. So the ground surface is here, here's a point, and here's the soil stratum, that means layer, okay? Soil mass. Okay, 20 years after this situation here, that is minus 80 years ago, there was a landslide somewhere, okay, that, pro that led to the accumulation of soil above the ground surface, okay? So now the, the profile, this is, these are profiles, of course, the profile looks like this. There's some soil that is above this point, okay? Then, 80 years later, we come in and we say that we want to build a structure on top here. So we want to understand or measure what are the consolidation properties of this soil. We don't know what happened 80 years ago or 100 years ago. We don't know that. We only know what happens today, right? So we come in here and routinely, as we do routinely, we take a specimen out of the ground and we put it in the lab to test. Notice that this point, point A, um, sorry, the, the, the labeling of the, of the specimen has been, it has been labeled A, just like the point. And this is something that uh, I find that many students are unaware of, which is that when we test a soil in the lab or when we test a material, any object that we test in the lab, what we are essentially um, assuming is that that thing that we test in the lab is a point. Okay, this is why sometimes maybe you have not heard it because it's kind of uh, not used anymore that much, uh, but not used anymore that much. It's not used that much anymore, okay? Which is the naming uh, lab testing, element testing. What we are doing is element testing. So when, uh, when you take a concrete cylinder to the lab and uh, you want to, to crush it to determine the, the strength of the cylinder of the, of the concrete, you're essentially assuming that that concrete cylinder is a point. It's one point inside, for example, a concrete column. Okay? So that's kind of interesting. The whole, the whole specimen mimics or is meant to, 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 to mimic a point. Okay? Even though it, it has a specific size. All right. So we take the, the specimen and we place it in the system here to load and, and determine the, the characteristics of consolidation for the soil the parameters. Now, let's go through what happens during testing or during the process of, of time. Sorry, not during testing, during the process of time. 100 years ago, the point is close to the ground surface. Therefore, the effective stress vertical on the point that the point is subjected to is very low and the void ratio is probably high because the soil is close to the ground surface therefore it's uh, it's loose let's say okay so the void ratio is high and the stress is low then 20 years later negative 80 years ago there is a landslide and some soil gets deposited on top of the point. So the point is now under a higher stress than before because there's more soil above it and the void ratio is probably lower 
because the soil has densified given the fact that there's load above it. So the point associated to this situation here is here. The stress is higher and the void ratio is lower. Now we are we do not know this we are we are as engineers we do not know the nature of these two plots because we don't know what happened. Okay? We are playing kind of a kind of a scientific violating science here saying that we know what happened and the idea is to to be able to go step by step in what happens to the soil in history this is called stress history okay so then we come in and we know that we are ready to remove this specimen from the ground we remove it from the ground and essentially what we have done is we have reduced the stress that is feeling because it's now outside right we have it let's say in our hands or in a sampler so there's no soil above it therefore the stress that it feels this point this soil specimen here for sample is reduced okay the coordinates are the coordinates of this point here number three and the void ratio is actually a little bit higher than at point two because the soil expands a little bit given that it has undergone a reduction in stress okay and then once we place it in the specimen uh, holder here in the in the setup in the consolidometer then we load it with our you know our procedures like that we get the data we reduce the data so that the plot that is of relevance to us is this one the consolidation curve and we get this curve for the soil okay which is noted here in red is in dashed line here okay now the important thing here is that or the, the, the kind of um, very interesting uh, thing here is that that break between the first portion and the second portion which occurs more or less at point four coincides with point two in terms of stress okay 0 0.4, 0 0.4 and 5 are points that are associated to loading during the test. Okay, so you can think of 0 0.4 as as a as point as as that as the as the point associated to the loading with the first weight, and then 0 0.5 the loading associated with the second weight, etc. Okay, maybe there are some points in here associated to different loads being placed in the specimen. But the key here is that the break in the consolidation curve coincides with point two and in terms of stress. That is, the stress at the break is the same stress at point two, this one here. What does this mean? <clears throat> well, if we go to point two, which is associated to this condition. This is the condition at which the point felt in all its life from being here to being in the lab. Well, to this to this time here. In all these three, in these three situations, the the this is the situation where the point was subjected to the highest stress that it had ever felt, that it has ever felt in its life. Okay? Now, when you take it to the lab and then you load it with these very high stresses for, for these points here, then you have loaded that point to higher than what it was feeling in the field. But the highest stress that that point was feeling in the field ever was 80 years ago. Okay? In fact, 80 years ago and, and all the time, immediate to, to the, all the duration of, of time, that is 80 years, right before you removed it. Once you remove it, then it lost. Um, that that stress right but the soil felt the maximum stress that it had ever felt for 80 years until you removed it from the ground right and that maximum stress that the soil felt is revealed by the consolidation curve is this break remember that the only thing we know in the lab 
okay, as engineers, is the red curve. We don't know what points 1, 2, and 3. We only know points 3, 4, and 5, and these other two that I've added here, let's say, okay? Those are the only ones that we get in the lab. We do not get points 1 and 2 and 3. So, the idea is that if you can determine this, this stress, which marks the transition, the break, then you have determined the maximum stress that the soil has ever felt in the field. Okay, so that's why we say that soils have memory. We said that at the very beginning of the course, where we said that, that, um, that a soil can remember the maximum stress that it has ever felt, the maximum previous load, let's say. And so, the way we know that is because when we when we calculate or, or, or determine the consolidation curve of a soil, there is a break. And that break corresponds to the maximum stress that the soil has ever felt, which I believe the book uses sigma C prime, but typically what we use is sigma P prime. Okay? That is called the pre-consolidation Pre-consolidation stress. Okay? It's the maximum stress that the soil has ever felt. That is a point in the soil has ever felt. Now, how do we know that this is true? Well, there have been numerous experiments. I mean, thousands of experiments where uh, people take some clay. Let's say some experimentalists take some clay. Okay? They load it to a specific stress. Okay? And then they unload it. So let's say they load it to uh, 500 kPa, allow it to consolidate for 500 kPa of load, and then remove the load to re remove 400 kPa so that the soil is under 100 kPa. Okay? So the maximum stress that that soil has ever felt is 500, even though after the test it, it's only feeling 100 because they've removed 400. And then they take this specimen of soil to another lab and then they tell the people at that lab to run, the, to run a consolidation test. And they run the consolidation test, starting from here, they run the curve, well, start, let's say starting from 100, okay? They run the test and they find that the break occurs at, at 500, okay? Just like the previous lab had imposed. So the, the second lab, the lab that, that does the test, this test, says, okay, you, you uh, lab number one, you know what you did? You loaded this specimen to a 500 kPa and then you removed 400 kPa so that, you know, when you gave it to me, it was feeling 100. But I can tell you based on my data that the maximum you loaded it to was 500, which is in fact the case. So this has been proven many, many times. And the, the reason why this happens is, is the is basically the, that the fabric, particularly of clay, the fabric of clay uh, holds some memory in terms of how the particles were assembled bef you know, before and after uh, loading. Okay? So, so uh, it's very interesting that, that one can determine, measure, okay, from a lab test, one can determine the maximum stress that a soil has ever felt. That's called the sigma p prime preconsolidation stress. Okay, it's also called the yield. Okay, but generally we use uh, preconsolidation stress to denote that transition. Okay, so here's a consolidation curve, a typical consolidation curve, let's say for soil. I'm sure that there are many more in the book, so please uh, take a look at those and, and read the. Make sure that you read the, all the sections. Now, when we have a curve, clearly, what we want to do is characterize it, right? So we know that the, this curve is a curve. It's not, there, it's not made by lines. But what we can do is we can break the, this curve into two portions, okay? And then take the slope of each portion and um, label those, in this case two portions, label those two slopes as parameters. This slope is called the recompression index. 
okay? C sub R. R stands for recompression. And this slope down here, the slope of the second portion, is called the compression index, C sub C. Now, why is this one called recompression index? And why is this one just called compression? Well, recompression means compression again, right? So we give the slope this name because we know that the soil, before we load it in the lab to get this curve, the soil has felt stresses of all magnitudes except magnitudes above this, this point, this stress, right? <clears throat> so if the soil is compressed within this, this, uh, this range here, we know that it has been recompressed because the maximum that it has ever felt is this value. Okay, so to give you you know numbers, let's say that the maximum stress that the soil has ever felt is 500 kPa, and the soil is the soil is um, subject to a stress of 100 kPa. Okay, if you add another 100 kPa to that initial 100, so from 100 to uh, to 200, then you have recompressed the soil because the soil sometime before was compressed to 100, 200, 300, all the way to 500. So any compression that occurs in here is a recompression, a, a compression that happened again to the soil. If the soil is loaded beyond 500 kPa, then it's loaded beyond the maximum that it has ever felt, okay? And therefore we say that we have compressed it, not recompressed it, okay? In this case, we, we basically say set 500 for this point as an example but this can be 150 it can be a thousand kpa it could be anything depending on of course the soil and its stress history what was the history of the soil before we came in and took a point from it okay so we are going to use this curve these parameters these three parameters and this fourth one, these four parameters, we're going to use them to determine, to predict, that is, what the consolidation settlement or the formation delta C is going to be in the field. Okay, so basically the, the idea is we have a site, we are concerned that consolidation will take place in the field, we um, we would like to know how much consolidation settlement or deformation will occur, so we go and take some specimens from or some samples from the from the soil in the field. We take those to the lab. Once we put them in the lab system, those samples become specimens, right? We test the soil in this configuration that we have talked about to eventually determine this curve for the soil, so that then we can use the parameters provided by the curve to determine the consolidation settlement of the mass of soil in the field.